let's say the position as a function of time is equal to time squared. Just a simple one. The position as a function of time is equal to time squared. So the derivative of x with respect to time, in other words, the derivative of time squared with respect to time. So that's what that means, right? The derivative of x with respect to time, well, x, the function, is equal to t squared. So then dx dt would just be the derivative of time squared with respect to time. And hopefully, if you read it in your textbook, and you can tell me what the derivative of time squared with respect to time is. Bob. Okay. I'm going to make it abundantly clear. Yes, I agree with that. But it is 2 times t to the 2 minus 1, right? Which means it's 2 times t to the first power, which is just 2 times t. Okay? So what you do is you multiply by the 2, and then you subtract 1 from it. And this is the derivative of x with respect to time, the derivative of position as a function of time. So the actual definition of that would look like this. The derivative with respect to time of t to the n power is going to be equal to n times t to the n minus 1. That's the definition. And you can see that's exactly what we did here. So again, going back to what the derivative is, it's the slope of a line at specific points. So if we have t squared as our function, the slope of the line at any point is going to be 2 times t. That's specifically what it means. So let's do a couple more examples. If x is equal to 4t cubed, dx dt is equal to Google speed what? Um, should I like go step by step? Give me what you got. Um, it's going to be 12t squared. Okay, let's walk through it, but yes. So we multiply by the 3, so we get 4 times 3 times t to the second power. 3 minus 2 is, I'm sorry, 3 minus 1 is 2. So we get 12t squared, the derivative of position as a function of time. Okay. What if we have instead y is equal to t to the fourth power minus 3t squared plus 4? What is dy dt equal to in this case? Um, James. Right? 2 to the 4th power. What do we do with that? 4t cubed. Okay, so this one is 4t cubed minus 6t. 6t, just to be clear, I'm going to put the 1 there, but yes, 6t would be fine. Notice, so the way we're going to make sure you people understand this is this is t to the 0th power, right? t to the 0th power is just 1. So if we multiply by 0, it's going to be 0. So this ends up being 4t cubed minus 6t. Because if you multiply by 0, it's just going to be 0. If you think about it, um, the slope of any line is just going to be, uh, is not changing. So the slope is going to be constant. OK, we got that. Let's do this one. Let's say we have y is equal to 17z minus 2z cubed minus 7z plus 4 dy dz. Okay. 
Z. Dy, Ds, Dlx. First off, the order doesn't matter as far as the derivative is concerned. You can do it for your own, for whatever you'd like, but the order doesn't really matter so much. But there is something we could do first. We don't have to do it first. Take a look. We could combine like terms. Notice we can combine like terms now or after we take the derivative. It doesn't really matter. Sure, why don't we take, combine like terms right now? We'll get uh, 17 minus 7, so we get 10z minus 2z cubed plus 4, and we're going to take the derivative with respect to z of that. So let's take the derivative of that, please, Khan. Um, so 10z becomes 10, okay. and then the negative 2z cubed becomes minus 6z squared, and the 4 just goes to 0. So dy dz, in this particular case, is going to be 10 minus 6z squared. All right, we'll do one more. V, the velocity equals 4x squared plus 2x to the fourth power, dv dx. Please take the derivative of that. That be? Uh, 8x plus 8x cubed. 8x plus 8x cubed. I'm going to agree. So that's just sort of the math of it. Let's now actually, so now, that was basic, you know, just math. Now we're going to take and apply this to physics. So x equals position. That is what x means. And clearly delta x was displacement. So if we take, if you recall, let's do yeah, we'll do this first. So the velocity, average velocity, what's the equation for average velocity, please, Evan? Um, average velocity is equal to flag and help out. <laughs> uh, is change in x over change in time. That is the equation for average velocity. Now, if we were to go through and do the whole limit thing, we, would, we could get the derivative of position as a function of time. And that would be the velocity in the x direction. But what's the difference between these two? Um, the derivative of the two is? I'm sorry, the derivative of position as a function of time. So we're comparing the velocity average to what's this? Is that acceleration? It is not acceleration, not yet. We'll get to acceleration in just a minute. Come on. Um, is the one on the right instantaneous? The derivative of position as a function of time is called the instantaneous velocity. So the instantaneous. What is the difference between instantaneous velocity and average velocity? Because that's effective. They have two different equations. Heather? Instantaneous velocity is the velocity of one specific average velocity is the velocity over a period of time. Perfect. So instantaneous velocity is specifically at an instant, the velocity at a specific instant, specific point in time, whereas average velocity is over a time period. We can do the same thing with acceleration. What is the equation for average acceleration? Average acceleration, please. Show. Change in velocity over change. That would be the change in velocity over change in time. And the the equation for instantaneous acceleration then would be J. Um, D, 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 D. The derivative of velocity as a function of time. So the change in position and change in velocity over time give you an average, whereas when you take the derivative, it gives you an instantaneous, the velocity and the acceleration at specific points in time. 